Hello, welcome to a bookshop tour. So on this side of the shelf I have classics, children's classics, modern classics, books about travelling and also a shelf full of TBR. And I'm currently reading The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue by B. E. Schwab. So starting from the top shelf I have A Plant, A Wisdom Tooth, <laughs> three Shakespeare books, A Candle, and a book about flowers, Fleur de Campagne, with a lot of really beautiful illustrations. On the first shelf I have classics, so children's classics, modern classics, and also Jane Austen. First I have Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, Little Women, and also Good Wives by Louisa May Alcott. A couple of other children's classics I read this spring, look at those beautiful illustrations. So, Anne of Green Gables by Ella Montgomery, A Little Princess and the Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Moving on to the modern classics and also contemporary books. First I have Spring by Amy Smith, Jersey Legends by Erin Michaels, The Complete Stories, The Early Stories, and The Grass Harp by Truman Capote. The Opposite of Loneliness by Marina Keegan, which I highly recommend if you haven't read it yet. To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf, which uses a stream of consciousness and is therefore rather difficult to understand, but also beautifully written. And last but not least, Summer in February by Jonathan Smith, which is based on two events taking place in the early 20th century, just before the First World War, and it is about an artistic community in Cornwall. Next to this, I have my Jane Austen collection, which is still incomplete, and I also have my little Shakespeare Company mug that I love very much. First, I have Northanger Abbey. I haven't read this one yet. Then Sense and Sensibility, which I recently read for uni. Pride and Prejudice, which is my favourite so far. And Emma, which I'm very looking forward to read very soon. On the next shelf, I have a collection of books about living abroad by a German publishing house. One about England, Sweden, Japan. New York, Portugal, Scotland, and Milan. A cute little candle holder I got in the Netherlands a couple of years ago, a copy of 1000 Places to See Before You Die, Blue River Black Sea by Andrew Eames, and Leaving the Frame by Maria Erich. Next to this I have a couple of books that didn't really fit in anywhere else, including Life in Motion by Misty Copeland, to All the Boys I've Loved Before series, Mary Poppins, The Midfoot Murders by Jessica Fellows, Five Red Herrings by Dorothy L. Sayers, and The Pearls of the Night by James Rimsey. On the bottom shelf at this side I have my TBR. I've already read a couple of those, but most of them are still unread. Where the Cool Dead Sing by Delia Owens, which is truly a beautiful book with breathtaking descriptions of nature. The Queen's Gambit by Walter Tevis. I also really like the Netflix adaptation of this book. Find Me, which is the second part of Call Me By Your Name. The Give of Stars by Jojo Moyes, which was a recommendation by Morgan Long if you liked Where the Cool Dead Sing. 
Educated by Tara Westover. Summer at Little Beach Street Bakery by Jenny Corgan, which is the second part in the series. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng, which was absolutely amazing and which is why I recently purchased her other book, Everything I Never Told You. Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. And also, Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. So on the other side of the shelf, we have a stack of different books in different languages, including, for example, The Great Gatsby or Poetry by Emily Dickinson. Also, a whole shelf dedicated to Agatha Christie, but also Sherlock Holmes. And then, of course, we have Harry Potter and also books by Kniega Funke, a very famous German author. Starting on the top shelf, I have a postcard with an illustration of my favourite bookstore, Shakespeare & Company in Paris, also a little sculpture that I made, and my plant. On the first shelf, I have a Peter Rabbit tea box with very cute illustrations and the tea is really delicious. I also have a pile of books in German, French and English that wouldn't fit in anywhere else. I have a few Reclam editions, for example, Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream and Romeo and Juliet, Breakfast at Tiffany's, another copy of Breakfast at Tiffany's and Summer Crossing by Truman Capote, then Der Nussknacker, so the Nutcracker, then another copy of A Midsummer Night's Dream that I got in the Globe Theatre, Le Petit Prince by Anton de Saint-Exupéry, Poetry by Emily Dickinson, The Great Gatsby, the Uncommon Reader by Ellen Bennett and Der Richter und sein Henker by Friedrich Dürrenmatt. On the next shelf I have a collection of Agatha Christie's which is how I got started with reading in English and the first book that I read was A Mysterious Affair at Styles and I remember reading this book a couple of years ago and I really, really enjoyed it and it's not too difficult to read when you are getting started with reading in English. I also highly recommend Partners in Crime with Tommy and Tuppins, which is really fun and enjoyable, and there's also a BBC adaption of this series. Next to that, I have a pile of Agatha Christie books in German and French. Mord am Orient Express. Une destination inconnue. Meurtre en Mésopotamie and Mörderisches Grün, which is a collection of short stories, and Das Geheimnis von Greenshaw Garden. On the next shelf, I have my childhood favourites, including Harry Potter and books by Cornelia Funke, including the Inkheart trilogy, Reckless, Herr der Diebe, and also Die Wilden Hühner. Starting with Harry Potter, I have a beautifully illustrated copy of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone in German that I got for my birthday a couple of years ago. It is so breathtakingly beautiful, so many details and such a beautiful illustration style. And then I have the entire Harry Potter series in German and English in different editions. Next to Harry Potter I have books by Cornelia Funke who is a German author. I have the Inkhard trilogy with its beautiful covers. Look at those details, it's truly amazing.
also reckless, which is also beautifully illustrated by herself, which I think is truly amazing. She has the ability to tell stories not only through words, but also through her beautiful drawings, which have always inspired me. And this copy is actually signed because I met her once at a reading. On the bottom shelf, I have a collection of Flow magazines, which are truly inspiring and they are very interesting articles about artists in there. And I also really like their colourful covers, which look so good in this bookshelf, in my opinion. I also have their workbook, 50 Ways to Draw Your Beautiful Ordinary Life, which was recommended by Morgan Long again. And I've already started practicing and drawing these cute little teacups, for example. And finally, next to this, I have a pile of books about Danton Abbey and The Crown, giving historical context and behind the scenes, which is very interesting. 